Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor. And today, I'll be reacting to the evolution of Leatherface animated by the Tellet animated channel for you guys. I was trying to think on which character that he ranked or ev did animated evolution of on his channel I should react to next. And I said, well, I haven't done Leatherface yet, and he was one of my favorites as well out of all of the other slashers. And I figured, why not? So I'm gonna turn the lights off, move the camera up here for you guys, and let's get this reaction on the room and in the bag. All right, everybody, here we go. What you are about to see is the result of multiple production companies milking a long dormant franchise, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Specifically, it's about Leatherface. In 1974, he slashed his way onto the silver screen, and he since appeared in seven more films. This is his evolution. Animated. Leatherface first appears in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, sporting an apron and face mask with large misformed ears and dark brown hair. Off the bat, that is my number one favorite Leatherface look. I mean, you can't beat the original killing costume, if you know what I mean. He switches into a more grandmotherly attire to meal prep. Uh, this look, I'm trying to think now, hold on. I would say I would put that in fifth place as one of my favorite Leatherface looks. Let's continue. Before putting on his Sunday best and a makeup covered mask. This one, the pretty woman is number two for me. That's just in time for family dinner. In the sequel, which takes place 13 years later, Leatherface is thinner and wears a heavily stitched mask with messy hair and a fancy tuxedo. I like this mask right here, but I would say this Leatherface would be more like in my number seven spot. He falls in love with a radio DJ, but the romance is interrupted when he faces off against a vengeful lieutenant, resulting in an explosion no man could survive. But he's back, somehow, in Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, wearing an orange dress shirt, brown pants, and a leg brace. His mat is pictures in an angle. This one will be in sixth place for me. I love the uh, Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. And I believe that this one is like the true sequel to the first movie because I think part two was like a different leather face altogether since he's not limping like the first one after he got hit with the chainsaw in the leg while this was clearly got a bracket on his leg through your expression with shaggy hair this time Leatherface has a young daughter he's raising but he gets hit with a rock then drowns in the swamp but his death is short-lived and in Texas Chainsaw Massacre the next generation Leatherface is now chunkier and has longer curlier hair poking through a darker mask he wears a long white tee a camo jacket and an orange apron later he briefly no uh to me this was like a uh funny parody of the first movie basically this is like his version of the killing costume. And for me, this one right here, I would say, and I would put him in this one in eight place. All right, let's continue. He steps into another grandma-ass apron and mask, and eventually- See what I mean? The original old lady looked better than that one, I'm telling you. Falls on a younger female look with a sleek black dress to show off his new curvy- Oh, hang no, uh-uh. See what I mean? This pretty woman is weird. <laughs> uh, looks like something you buy at like a, one of those Halloween stores. It was like in the cheap clearance section or something. Like it, it's revolting. Look. You figure. Finally, it's revealed that Leatherface is being paid by an Illuminati. Which this whole part of the movie did not make no sense for me. I'm like, really? Him and his family are part of this Illuminati cult stuff. <laughs> I'm glad they did not continue with that in other films. 
Any type organization to scare unsuspecting victims. Or, uh, something like that. But it doesn't matter, because this timeline would be forgotten for a reboot series. Starting with the reboot prequel, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, we see a baby Leatherface, apparently born with a skin disorder, get tossed into a dumpster. He's saved from the garbage and grows into a muscular man wearing a leather muzzle to cover it. Say, this is the one I like more right here. Um, it's higher on my list. But then when he switches Spanx. over... After getting fired from the slaughterhouse job, he fashions a young male mask. When he switches over to this one, I say, yeah, that's more like Leatherface. With curly hair. In the original reboot, Leatherface's hair is shorter, his clothes darker and ragged, and he's wearing arm protectors. His mask is... Cr now, this is the one that's like in my fourth place right here. I just like how this one looks, uh, looks more evilish. <laughs> Gray with a furrowed brow. And for a short while, he also dons a mustachioed mask. Despite losing an arm, he leaves a quick... That scene right there really hurt me right there and be like, ah! Can't imagine seeing a, a slasher losing his limb. Well, uh, Freddy did in uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Like, Jason just ripped his glove hand right off. Quick <laughs> video behind before disappearing forever. The reboots would be dropped in order to make a direct sequel to the original. Picking up where the first movie left off, Leatherface is shown once again in a slightly altered Sunday Best Ensemble. When his house is set on fire, he's assumed to be dead, only to reappear 40 years later. He starts by wearing a red shirt, brown pants, and apron, and a dark, uneven mask, then upgrades to a pale, unshapely mask. This is the one I like right there. Mask. He meets his long-lost, oddly attractive cousin, who eventually helps him face off against the people who burned down his house. The origin film, Leatherface, depicts a young child Leatherface wearing a cow head. He's tossed into an institution and grows into a large young man built exactly how we remember him. Uh, oops, uh, never mind, that's the wrong character. He's actually this skinny, handsome boy. He falls for an attractive nurse and breaks out of the institution. This to me, this film was unnecessary. I mean, like, you're trying to make him like Michael Myers, where he escaped from a mental hospital. His face becomes disfigured. He decides to, shall we say, act out and start wearing skin masks. Because, well, he's angry, I guess. I don't know, I'm just waiting for the prequel sequel where he grows six inches and gains 200 pounds to become the other face we actually care about. Wow. Thank you for subscribing and liking the video. All right, everybody, that's my reaction to the evolution of Leatherface animated by Taylor Animated's channel. And I'm sorry I kept on rambling on about the whole the Leatherfaces and how they look, but I couldn't help myself. But anyway, I might end up doing that one day, um, ranking all the Leatherface masks throughout the movies so far, unless they announce uh, what the new Leatherface looks like, and then I'll wait until that movie's released or anything. But anyway, uh, if you guys are interested, in that, let me know down in the comments, all right? And uh, that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications for more tele-animated content like this. This has been another successful installment of the Tin Man's Corner channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, and I said that's a wrap, and have a nice day.